All right, guys, today we have a box that I got today. Um, I purchased on the internet and it arrived at my door and I don't quite know what it says, but it's rather heavy. And it says bin on it, which refers to glass bottles, I believe. And so today we're gonna open it up and see what's inside. I'm gonna give you a hint. It's definitely alcohol. I spent, I'd say roughly, I think around like 50 bucks on this. It's actually two, um, two orders that came in the same box. And yeah, just about, just about 50 bucks. Um, maybe like a little bit more with shipping and then the conversion rate. Uh, but yeah, let's take a peek inside. Um, yep, very, very meticulously wrapped. Um, so this actually is an assortment of various miniature alcohol bottles. And as you can see, there's a pretty good amount of them, at least 20 or 30. Uh, and I'm gonna pick out a couple of these, open them up. Maybe I'll open all of them up. We'll see how this goes and just show you what's inside and hopefully we'll get to the reason why I bought it, which is, you know, will justify why I spent 50 bucks on them. So you won't maybe laugh at, as hard as you might at me for having done this. Uh, so let's see, I'll grab something randomly, I'll pick it up. Oh, and it's exactly why I bought the this package. So we've got this here, two bottles wrapped together. Someone went through some effort to do this. And the first bottle we have here, on the top actually looks rather old looks rather degraded does look like it has a tax stamp or what appears to be a tax stamp apparently with bourbon they took away tax stamps sometime around 1984 um, and then brought back like fake tax stamps but then they're actually like real ones i think that at some point certified that um that i guess the state or Actually, may not be the state, like the federal government had approved um, the sale and taxes had been paid by someone, of which I don't really know everything, but um, take a look. This is the first bottle. Um, it looks like it was, it won some sort of award in Brussels. Um, and I have no idea what this is. Uh, Recure liquor. Okay, so it's some sort of liqueur or liquor. The tax stamp is totally, totally worn out. I'm not quite sure if I can get this in focus, uh, but it, yeah, there's very much a lot of liquid in here. I may drink it, I may not, it may kill me. Let's hope not, and we'll set that aside. Um, yeah, I really have no idea what that is. And then I bought this box um, because I actually wanted this, and I saw like a really large assortment of bottles, and they all looked like hell, and then I was really hoping that this was what I thought it was in the picture. And sure enough, um, you know, it's an old fixture, old bottled and bond. Um, and I think if you look, oh no, it's covered. Um, it's supposed to say Stitzel Weller right under here. It's supposed to say, and if you guys are familiar with bourbon, um, that's a, a very famous distillery, long shut down. Um, I guess Buffalo Trace had, I believe, Oh God, I'm gonna get this all wrong. Like they had bought their distillery, I think. Whatever it is, um, Pappy Van Winkle, the famous bourbon of, of today, uh, was formerly Stitzel, Stitzel Weller bourbon, bottled under the Pappy Van Winkle name by, it was I think like Julian Van Winkle, the, maybe the second, maybe the third, you, you correct me, um, but since then, that bourbon that's now in these Pappy Van Winkle or Old Weller, um, Old Rip Van Winkle or these Weller bottles, um, they're no longer Stitzel Weller bourbon. They're, um, they're made by Buffalo Trace. And so uh, this should be, in fact, what is it? A tenth of a pint. I don't actually know what that is. I think it's like um, 1.6 ounces or so like a little less than like an American shot. Um, but uh, yeah, this should be like 1960s Stitzel Weller. Um, so, you know, I mean, order a shot of something like that from that era. I don't know, would you pay what, like 
50 bucks and get all this free or would you get all of this and then that you know for 50 bucks i don't know um you tell me um so set that aside over there and got a couple more maybe i'll open that up and see what we got this looks really old really dusty really gross uh and this is prince hebert de polignac pulling yeah uh, it's some sort of cognac um vsop uh tax samples oh yeah it's all worn out uh yeah plenty of liquid in there i don't know where they kept this but there isn't much evaporation it doesn't look like it's been like resealed or sealed up I do have some older bottles that someone had glued, uh, so they didn't leak, and they do look beautiful. They did keep all the liquid, but they're glued. But these look fine. They're just, like, worn as hell. And so, yeah, maybe I'll drink this. Um, maybe I'll record a video, and you'll see me drinking that. Let's move this out of the way. Give me some plenty of space to work with. You got this here. <laughs> um, Paris Amour. Uh, I don't know what this is. It looks low proof, like 58 proof, so it makes me think it's some sort of liqueur. Um, I would imagine that given the low proofage, this is probably disgusting. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever that is. Let's get this front and center because this is, this, this guy's, I like this guy right here. This is why I bought this. Is it going to stay? Yeah, cool. Um, all right, cool. More, more mini bottles. Um, let's see. More tax stamps. So I think that this whole box is like from the 1960s or so, or maybe the 1970s. Someone can correct me if, if I'm wrong. And I think, um, yeah, they're just well kept. Maybe they're someone's collection. And there's a good chance that this came from like an estate sale. I got them for a really good price. So I think that like the person who got them didn't know exactly what they were, didn't separate them to be sold to bourbon folks. Um, sorry, skip over this guy. Geneva, 69 proof. This is by De Cooper, right? De Cooper and Son. So like they make all those like gross liqueurs that like you go to like Dave and Buster's or I don't know where the hell you go and you get like really cheap crabby cocktails. And then that's like a really old brand. But I guess at some point, I guess, oh, they're from Holland. Um, maybe this was like the old school version of it before they became just like a bastardized version of just junk. I have no idea what this is. I don't want to drink it. Maybe I'll have someone else drink it. I'll get drunk enough. I will, I will definitely drink that at some point. Uh, who am I kidding? Um, old Brandy. This is stock 84. So maybe this is circa 1984. So like maybe this is like the end of those tax stamps. And you can see it says certificate. I can imagine it says tax certificate. Um, brandy. Brandy. So this is Brandy. Oh, because it says it right there. Duh. And that looks... Uh, I don't know if I want to drink that one. I have bought a good number of, like, Japanese brandies lately. Um, I've got plenty to try. Maybe I'll record a video of those. And you'll see just how much crazy shit I have just laying around. More tax stamps, and these are super cool because this, since they're from 1984, they these are from before I was born. I was born in 1984, but... Um, so anyway, um, bourbon. You guys are here for bourbon, Mattingly, and more... Tax stamp, just super, super worn out. Um, like, look at that fill, right? Like, look at that fill. It's the whole damn thing, right? And so, like, I don't know. I, I mean, like, if you just put this Old Fitzgerald and this Manly and Moore together, like, how much would you pay for this? I mean, like, people are spending crazy, crazy bucks for, like, what I thought when I was getting into bourbon, just off-the-shelf junk. Um, I mean, I don't want to sound mean. There's just – there's – Bourbon's just really expensive these days, and like I, I don't know why people are spending the amount they are, but uh, people are bored. They've got a lot of money. Bourbon's delicious, and it's a really fun hobby. And so, like, if you can do it and you can play that game, more power to you. Enjoy it. Um, Old Crow. So this is another one of the bottles I wanted. This does look a little not so clear. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell. It doesn't look. I mean, it looks clear, but it's not that clear. Um, and I think Old Crow, as I understand, um, is another one of the more famous old whiskey distilleries. And so this was another bottle I wanted, but I even saw in the pictures before I bought it that this one looked a little milky. I don't know um, if this is one that's like maybe part of something inside decayed or if this is oxidized in a certain way or if it's, you know, I heard that there's like a high urethane content in older bourbon. 
and yeah i'm really not quite sure <laughs> i will probably drink this i will probably share it with like a friend um who will need to you know we'll just we'll split it we'll split the risk and you know uh maybe i'll lower my risk by half by sharing it with a friend so um we'll open this and this one oh it's a bummer like when the labels are falling off some of these are actually this is like the seal but this is another what is this this is some sort of french orange Curacao liqueur, this, oh, do not want, just get out of here. If y'all, you guys get out of here. Uh, oh, yuck, oops. And yeah, you guys can stay here. Um, what do we have here? One more. We've got, oh God, creme de mocha. And you cannot, you will not be able to pay me to drink that. Uh, if you want it, if you want that bottle, just let me know and you can have that. Get that out of here. That is, that just, I mean, 50, I don't know how, I mean, maybe that's not from the 60s. Maybe that's from 84. Maybe it's 36 years old or 37 years old. I don't know. Oh, and then look at this guy. Um, this was my favorite, I guess, spirit of choice during my college days. My best friend, Ryan, really loved um, gin and tonics because he was like a fake British rock and roll guy and um, I'm feeling supersonic give me gin and tonic uh, oasis kind of guide so we had many 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 tank and tonics and I like like tank 10 had come out then we we're like oh it's so cool and you know I fell in love with the bottle and like I'd actually never seen this bottle or this label before but yeah um, Charles Tanqueray and Co and London and that's that's kind of cool and I don't know if I should clean these up like would it look nice for me to dust them off or should I keep them dirty maybe these ones because they're just so well aged um I've been cleaning off some of the bottles that I've bought just because like they just look a little prettier cleaned up but like these I mean these have like the age of this has time on it right so um We've got chartreuse, something from France again. So maybe whoever got these, like some of them, maybe they got from France. Nope, actually, I guess they, this they bought um, in Japan, right? As the Japanese label. Uh, but yeah, a lot of overrepresentation from France. I'm gonna speed this up. Lots of talking, not enough bottles, right? Um, I W Harper, right? You got another bourbon here. Um, I don't know, maybe this one had a tax stamp on it before. I don't know, Harper, I've been seeing a lot of these in Japan, and, like, generally it can be pretty cheap, but, like, the labels have stayed fairly consistent over time. It's hard to tell the difference between each one. So I don't really know how old this is, except for based on everything else around it. This must be 60s, 70s. If you know, tell me. I don't, I don't know, man. No clue. Now, I do not have the time to figure that out at the moment, because I am busy opening... Hein Cognac. Yay. All right, so let's split these off. Bourbon here, things that I like. Um, maybe let's tip these over. You can see. Okay. Right. Tip that guy over. What a mess. Um, more, more stuff. Some of these bottles are actually really, really funny looking. Uh, this one on the left, I think just has got like this weird, like old kind of, cone top of sorts not quite a cone but you'll see what is this slow gin <laughs> ball slow gin <laughs> looks looks absolutely disgusting um i don't know if i'll get drunk enough to try that but maybe one day maybe one day i'll be desperate enough maybe that will be my last day let's hope not and this is some sherry so this is kind of funny looking and this is just so worn and so weathered and so like I don't know if this is rust but like if you saw this on your car under your paint like you knew that you're in trouble um and I doubt sherry lasts I mean the fill level is really good on this and this looks neat and it's just crumbling right in front of me so I'm gonna get set this aside um more 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 it looks like I've got at least another 20 bottles in here so let's see this next one oh my my other classic favorite so like this was the this is what got me started drinking because one of my friends uh, from high school, his dad loved Johnny Walker, <laughs> and so he does fill up this flask that I found in my brother's closet. Um, and this is how I started drinking in high school: is I started drinking this stuff, and I would drink scotch and not know what I was doing, and feel funny, and pass out. And and I don't think I threw up until quite a ways later, but I definitely, definitely, 
you know, started myself off on like some like harder stuff, so harder to drink, I guess, not that high alcohol, but just felt like it at the time. I mean, when you're 16, 17 years old. Uh, so I think this is Johnny Walker red label. I don't know if it's the same as like the same red label that you buy today. It does say Johnny Walker, old Scotch whiskey, red label right in the middle. Fill level is really good. This looks old. You got the tax stamp, tax certificate right there. It says certificate. So that will be neat to try at some point because I would like to see that next to my gin. Uh, maybe I'll make a gin and tonic with that. We'll see how it compares. Maybe we'll compare it against a new bottle, but then I'll have to buy more alcohol, which I don't know if I need to do. Some sort of Napoleon brandy. If you know anything about brandy, if you want me to like talk more about brandy, you just let me know, but I don't know anything. And so I will have to, I'll have to drink all of these to like educate myself and to know what exactly is going on with brandy. Um, and whether or not it's something that I like and want to start to consume. Um, or cognac, it's cognac and brandy. And so this is cognac, that's brandy. They're both, I'm, I'm sure popular spirits, their time has come and gone, I guess. And people love bourbon now, scotch at a time. Here's more balls, there's cherry brandy. This just like, this is just hospital juice. This is just, that's how you die. Last day drinking that. Opening this guy right here. Oh, I crumbled it. Oh, that's not, I guess that's not how you're supposed to do. It's not how you're supposed to do it, right? Um, Claymore, it's rare old Scotch whiskey distilled, distilled in Scotland. And so yeah, good fill level, probably not too bad. Probably will consume this. Maybe this was kept upright. Maybe someone kept it. I don't know if it was in the case because it just it looks, looks so, so, um, I, I mean, I keep saying it's worn. It's not worn down. It's like just so much filth and grit has gotten on it, but it must have not gotten much sun, right? Otherwise it would have, you know, would have vaporized more, evaporated more. Claymore, big old sword. Then we got this. Come party. <laughs> Fuck, I'm not going to drink that. Uh, you can't even challenge me to drink that. And then... Here's some sort of like mint, menth, Marie, Brizard, kind of colorful stuff will never ever be consumed. Should, should probably just bin it. Um, Bristol cream. Uh, I don't, it doesn't look like it's a creamy thing, but it is sherry. I don't know how long this keeps. I, I think I've read at some point that sherry keeps okay, um, but I'm not gonna drink that and you shouldn't either. So don't drink that. Oh, man. And we're getting to kind of like the glut of it because we didn't really build up because the first one I grabbed was the, was the uh, Fitzgerald. But here's, um, here's some, another Napoleon Cognac. I don't know if I'm supposed to drink that. Um, another menth. I'm just going to put just gonna put this in the box. I mean, no, I don't think anyone wants to see that. I do see another bottle that I wanted to show you guys. Um, and so I'll save that one towards the end just because I can see it peeking out. It's really unique. Uh, this is Calvados, which I think is more brandy, right? Um, I th I was, I'm really into craft beer and I know that there's like some Calvados barrel aged um, beers. I don't remember which ones. They're probably forgettable, but I think that's when I, when I learned about the word Calvados, which I think is a type of brandy. Um, if I'm wrong, I don't care. Um, let's see. Oh, this one's degrading too, uh, but you know, there's nothing precious about this except for it's a Highland Queen Scotch whiskey. Um, great fill level, totally looks to be totally drinkable. And if someone knows anything about like old Scotch has lead in it, even though it's not in a ceramic decanter and like, just don't drink it. Like, please warn me immediately. Tell me, don't drink this and I will set it aside so that I may live to do more videos like this maybe, or ramble on more, more Napoleon Cognac. Um, and then, yeah, so there was a lot of bycatch in this. Like, you know, when, when they do fishing and then, you know, they want tuna and then you end up like catching like a dolphin um, and you end up catching, um, you know, like an octopus and crabs and stuff like that. But like, there's stuff that you don't actually want. This is just all the bycatch. So like, oh yeah, triple sec, like nobody wants that, but it was okay. 
because I got this old Fitzgerald, which is all I wanted. <laughs> Bacardi Superior, hell yes. We used to put this in Carl's Jr. cups, uh, like big old Carl's Jr. cups, and then go play Counter-Strike at, uh, I guess, PC Bing, PC Bong. Um, and yeah, shout out to, to Nettong PC Bong in Cerritos, where I used to school my friends with a USP while I was drinking Bacardi Superior uh, and Pepsi, maybe? Coke. I th is Carl's Jr. a Coke or Pepsi? Who knows? Um, it's got to be... Jeez, i got to remember. It's got to be... they got to be Coke. Everyone's Coke, right? No, no one in the fast food restaurants use Pepsi. Um, oh, what is this? Oh, I thought it... At first I saw the X and I thought it could have been, like, something like... Like some agave-based spirit or something like that. Uh, nope, from Greece, some sort of Greek specialty liqueur. I'll save this for my friend George, and he'll tell me all about how he used to drink that when his ancestors, when when he was fighting the Turks or something. I don't know. This is more more creme de cacao. That's that's nightmare fuel and hospital juice. Um, we got. More of this Marie Brizard stuff, which is just get out of my face. And then we've got, um, what the hell is this? Old, old Krupnik, Polish punch, made from vodka, honey, spices, aromatic herbs. Um, let's see, can you get in there? Aromatic herbs, based on centuries old recipes, should be served hot. <laughs> And this is uh, this is a product of Poland. Should be served hot. Will will never be served to anyone. We're almost there. You've gotten this far, so you'll see. If you like bourbon, that's probably why you're here, because I probably shared this with you. Just check out um, another. I think this is another Highland Queen, right? We just saw one hey, right there, right? No one cares about that guy. And then there's this is Remy Martin cognac. I think that great. This should be. Could be good, should be good. This is really cool. Like, you can like learn about um, something representing various growths of the Cognac district in France. And there's this like little map here. And I wonder which areas you can even go here that like you won't get blown up by a or like an unexploded bomb from World War One. But yeah. Pretty neat. I think I would try this. This might be interesting. I would want to compare it against like where it is today because I don't even know. And so it might be neat. So shifting things out. And so like, yeah, these are the, these are the last ones here. So we've gotten through quite a few in what is around like 20 or so minutes of opening bottles, opening packages of bottles. Here is, okay, so here is my Hecho in Mexico. In Mexico, Mexico, um, maybe agave based spirit, right? Hundred hundred percent destillado, um, anejo, something. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get this wrong, so someone can educate me one day and tell me how this should be pronounced. But I think that if this is a tequila of sorts, I can't drink that because if I do, I will have a police encounter and I don't like that. So no, no tequila for me. And the last one is this little hip flasky looking thing with the curve and like just so retro and cool. This like this JW Dant seven year bourbon, Kentucky street bourbon. And this is the other one I wanted. Cause like, apparently there's a whole bunch of other, um, JW Dance actually can show you some in my next video. Um, and the bottles have changed over time. It's really kind of fun and it's so full. And I will just like want to whip this out of like my jacket pocket. And like, I don't know if I, I want to pour it into a coffee because I don't think that's my style, but I do want to just whip it out and be like, oh, you know, you guys don't carry, you know, 50 year old bourbon in your pocket. It's like, oh yeah, like, anyway, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to drink it at some point or maybe it'll just sit in my closet. Like all of this, all of this probably will. Um, so yeah, this whole heap um, of stuff with a little bit of nostalgia of the the Bacardi and the Red Label and the Tanqueray, but I also got these this Old Crow that will probably be poison, 
this, I believe, Stitzelweller, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Old, Fitz, Old Fitzgerald Stitzelweller bottled in bond, which I'm stoked about. This is why I bought all of this mess. And, you know, there's Madeline and more, some scotch, and just, like, stuff that, like, you certainly, certainly don't want to drink. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.